Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about an affordable PoE network switch. Now for those that are in the know, PoE standing for Power Over Ethernet is a system included in a lot of kind of mid-range switches for business and indeed now home users. It presents you with the ability to not only have a device that can manage all the network connections of all the devices in your home environment, be they wired or unwired in some cases with a connection of a wireless router, but on top of that, a PoE switch presents you with the ability to connect certain Ethernet devices that do not need further mains power. So if you think about IP speakers, IP cameras, and some other monitoring and alarm um, services, you'll know that some of these devices, although very, very good and network enabled, do require some amount of power. Not a lot, but just enough to keep them running and transmitting data to the overall network and normally storage devices. So how is that solved? With PoE switch switches. Now, this is the OvoLink moderately affordable switch it's an eight port poe switch that's available for about 90 quid on a few online platforms and again amazon big ones but it is available on other ones too and it makes a big bold promise that it is the most affordable managed network switch with poe out there which is a big big bold claim you guys know i've seen a lot of switches and particularly poe and with managed switches now coming down in price such so substantially so that it's so close to an unmanaged switch that you don't really need to bother, it's worth wondering whether an affordable POE switch if this is now this device's time. Now the exact part number, I want to get the number of ones right, is the um, GS1110P. And I'm going to call it the G1100 perhaps from this point onwards, because that is a hell of a mouthful. Uh, but the OvoLink sent this through to me, and I'm going to be doing some speed tests and software overviews of this switch compared with other switches such as the QNAP switch there at the top, the 308, and of course some other Netgear switches that I have here around as well. I think there is the GS100P from Netgear that we're going to do a comparison with. But what does this give you at the moment that makes it, if not affordable, then at least approachable? Well, for 90 quid you are getting that 8-port PoE switch. With a total power output of 120 watts, it is maximi um, It has a maximum limit of 30 watts per individual 1 GBE port. That's right, this is a 1 gigabit Ethernet switch. This is not designed for 10 gigabit Ethernet connectivity, and it isn't upgradable. Um, it has its own manageable web user interface, which again, you can kind of tinker and tailor things as well, and it is foundless in design, so even if you're in close proximity, it's not going to make a lot of noise. And these managed switches, one of the things that makes them very, very or, uh, desirable is a lot of the time the fact that you've got features such as quality of service and protection from DDoS in the background, but also um, port priority and device priority, something we are going to look at quite a lot on the software overview of this device. This is a hardware overview, and we will be moving into the software portion later on. So, as you can see, I've not even opened this device for the first time. So this is going to be our first true look at this switch. I've seen like obviously product images researching for this video, but it's going to be interesting to see just what this switch looks like and moreover what it can do in the software overview later. And again, have a look, nice and petite the switch. We'll have a look at that in just a second. On top of that, we can look at our accessories. As you would expect from PoE switch, it has got quite a substantial power brick. Now, very few switches apart from the real, real high-end 10, uh, 10 GBE PoE type switches will have an internal PSU. Almost all of them have an external power brick. And PoE switches can get really hot. So it's one of the other reasons why an external power brick is essential. So it's quite big, kind of flat, kind of laptop job there. And as mentioned, it's 120 watts maximum in terms of PoE uh, achievement on this and on top of that we've got an external power cable that connects into there and we've got brackets to install this device in a mini rack or install in the device wall mounted or ceiling mounted and that's your lot really there's your accessories get rid of those keep those on the one side because what you guys want to see is the unit itself and again if you are watching this looking for the software overview i'd advise if you're watching this after about march 2020 Stick around and chances are you will um, get the software overview. We can get a full more complete package of what this is putting out there. As you can see, the, the company themselves, as you expect from a lot of Eastern companies, um, they do a lot of drop shipping and kind of bulk 
selling through Amazon. Unsurprisingly, we have got information there with regards to extra accessories and other stuff that they've got on their portfolio. Also inside, we have got first time installation guide. We've got the quick start setup guide and warranty information with regards to the device and it arrives with a one year warranty. Um, a little shorter, gotta say, than companies like Netgear that produce a lot of solutions like this. And they normally arrive with a two or five year warranty, so it's a little shorter than a number of those other companies out there, but again, that is reflected in the price, with Netgear solutions typically arriving two, even three times more expensive than their other rivals. We've got some stickers there for background information, uh, and a lot of that has to do with the admin access. And finally, we can look at the OVO Link PoE switch itself. Let's bring that closer to camera. So you can see we have got those eight 1GBE ports right there, all of them PoE enabled up to 30 watts each. And we've also got a G9 port. And again, I'm, I'm curious about these additional ports here that we're going to find out more about during the software overview. Also, quite interesting, we have an SFP port there to integrate this with an SFP environment, bringing the total number of ports on this to 10 if you include the additionals and the combo link port there. We've got lights there that denote the system while it's in access. And of course, as you'd expect from any switch device, we have got individual lights that denote uh, network connection and network activity. So what use is a PoE switch? Particularly if you're a home user, the draw of a PoE switch can probably be a little bit, you know, underwhelming. The idea that the devices in your network environment, almost all of them have either mains or battery power as it is. Why would you, a home user, need a PoE switch? Well, there's a couple of rather common scenarios that people utilize. For example, if you are gonna use IP cameras around your home or environment, a home or business environment, and if you do utilize some of the modern NAS solutions from Synology, QNAP, and more, you'll know that these solutions arrive with an entire surveillance setup, the ability to add cameras and record all that data to a NAS drive. On top of that, you can get cameras from the likes of Edimax, Hikvision, Rio Link, um, all of these companies, they all arrive with support of their cameras that uh, record to memory cards or even to external connected USB drives, which is all great. But all of these devices require power, and particularly if you're going to utilize external cameras. And you might find that the majority of external cameras, ones that are, you know, tested IP66, weather, uh, IP66 weatherproof, there's no denying that these cameras are going to be in locations where a power supply is going to be very hard to come by. And it's those devices that a PoE switch is very, very useful. Because even if you don't use the, this switch as your primary environment you can connect this to an isp router or any modem you've got or even another switch and therefore have those cameras connected to this with this device at a mains power point and remember cat 6 goes up to 20 or even 50 meters and still maintains the power uh, via a cat 6 or cat, cat 7 cable to support those external devices and with those you can feed the cables directly into this and power those external devices up to eight of them. The majority of uh, external cameras won't utilize more than that 30 watt minimum per port. And it's also worth highlighting that IP speakers use even less. Although some of the enterprise kind of clacks and ones, they have a larger power draw and this might not be suitable for those. The other issue, uh, I wouldn't say issue, the other area where you might find utilization of a power over ethernet switch is to do with having a smart home and a lot of smart home devices be they you know really microscopic ones or speaker based ones or even light switch based ones a lot of these devices require a kind of non-linear mains power they don't have the access to an external plug port maybe they'll use batteries but the majority of them need power in a less orthodox source than a simple mains connector to the wall and that's another area where home users take advantage of PoE. Business users, different story. The majority of business users will buy a switch that has a couple of dedicated PoE swats, uh, ports, whether it's for cameras, speakers, smart systems, alarm, doors, secure doors, that sort of thing. A PoE switch has a lot of versatility in that environment. That's why you can see why OvoLink have kind of moved into this area as much as they can. 90 pounds for um, an eight slash 10 port poe switch is pretty impressive at this price point and again that's why i keep calling it an eight port because of that combo environment but even for an eight port poe switch sub 100 pounds 
including that is pretty damn reasonable. Now I'm gonna reserve total judgment until I've done the software review of this device, got it up and running, had a look at their um, web-based graphical user interface and just see what this device offers and of course, compare it against the Netgear very, very soon. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two. Don't click like if you didn't enjoy it or don't you know click like even if you did, just save it until you've seen the whole review and base it on all the parts together. Because right now, I quite like what I'm seeing but it's early days and it's going to be interesting to see if this device can surprise me. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe to learn more and I'll see you next time.